everyone, welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, if you've been following this series, you're probably thinking, why isn't she at her sewing machine? Well, I'm gonna explain that because I wanna talk about this quilt here for a second, but I'm gonna dilly-dally for a moment. I'm gonna let some of you guys hop on. I'm gonna make sure I see some of you hopping on. Say hi in the comments, guys. Oh, I'm so excited to be back with you guys. I had an absolutely wonderful trip to the beach, um, but there's no place like home. At the end of the day, there's no place like home. There's no place like being here with you guys, and I'm so excited to be back um, for another week of Quote Your Own Adventure. Um, oh, my mom just texted me an update about my kiddos. Hi, Hubster. Hubster's downstairs watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey Katie, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, let me open this up so I can see y'all's comments properly. Hey Sandra. I'm trying not to cut my own head off. Hey Karen, hey Winifred, hey Sue, hey Veronica. Oh guys, I'm so excited to be back with you guys. All right, while y'all are hopping on, I'm going to click the share button and push this over to the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. Um, if you're not part of the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, I would love for you to join us. It's a free group. Um, it is our community here at String and Story. Um, it's an opportunity to share your work, to ask questions, especially if you're taking my Intro to Free Motion quilting class, which is a free online class, or any of my other classes, or if you're working on my patterns. It's a wonderful place to jump in, show your work, and also ask for feedback. Um, sometimes I just know it's good to have a safe place to ask questions, and that's what Quilting Rockstars is. There is a link in the caption of this video to go join, and while I am hitting the share button over to Quilting Rockstars, um, I would love it if you would hit the share button and share this video to your page um, or to your favorite quilting group wherever it's your favorite place to hang out with quilters go ahead and hit that share button and push it over so more people can come party with us and then after you hit the share button hit like all of these things help more quilters see this video and I really want to reach as many people as possible to be as part of our community all right let me here we go oh gotta add an emoji hang tight and yes, I did miss you guys. I saw that question scroll by. I really did. Um, it was a wonderful break. It was a much needed break. Um, my chiropractor, I went and got adjusted yesterday and my chiropractor was like, you're in pretty good alignment. Like you really should go on vacation more often. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's probably true. Amy, I'm so glad you're catching me live. Hey Lydia, let's see what's going on. Um, I hope any of you who are in the path of this hurricane flow um, are safe. We're gonna get some of it this weekend, but I think it'll be fine. I, you know, we have we had our big tree taken out that was having issues, um, so we should be good to go from here. Thank you to all of you who are clicking share with me. I really appreciate that and clicking like. Y'all are the best. Um, okay, a few housekeeping items. I already mentioned, make sure you've joined Quilting Rock Stars. There's a link in the caption of this video. I'd love to hang out with you guys over there. I do an additional live video every week inside that group on Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. It's our String and Story social hour. Um, and we usually have a quilt along or some other project going on um, over there that we're working on together. And sometimes we just goof off and do crazy things like a trivia night. Um, the possibilities are endless. So if you would like an additional live video each week um, and just wonderful community, the community over there is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I love I love being a part of it. It's great. Uh, so click that. Um, what was the other thing I was going to tell you guys? Oh, last week's winner. Um, Patricia. Patricia Rawls. Trisha Rawls? Patricia Rawls? I think sometimes you go by both. Um, but you won a copy of Margaret Goes Modern. So as you're watching this, Patricia, if you will send me an email, I'm trying to make this not glare. There we go. Margaret Goes Modern. I know it's backwards. Sorry, guys. Um, I read it at the beach. It's delightful. I laughed. I cried. I clutched my pearls in just delight. Not in horror, but in delight. Um, so if you'll send me an email, stringandstory at gmail.com. Patricia, I will connect you with Francis and get that book over to you. Thank you so much for all of you who entered. We had a huge number of entries this week, and I loved reading about all of your favorite family vacations. Y'all have done some really seriously awesome stuff. Um, Amy, let's see, keeps kicking you off. Oh no, that's so sad. I'm sorry that it's kicking you off. Um, this week's question of the week for another giveaway. I'm going to give away a copy of this pattern. This is the Aldebaran quilt pattern. The pattern is not actually out yet. The pattern comes out on the 21st. Our quilt along starts the 28th, but the pattern is available for pre-order. So if you want the, f the yardage requirements, if you want the schedule for the quilt along, all of that stuff is available inside the pre-order of the pattern. Um, and that's available. Do I have a link for that? I don't think I do. Hang tight. 
Oh, let me do that. Um, stringandstory.com slash shop. If you go to my website and go to the shop, you'll see it. Um, but I'm giving away a copy of this pattern this week. So the question of the week is what is your favorite traditional block? Um, <laughs> Teresa, I know, right? Um, so what, how that will work is you'll get the pre-order now and then when the pattern launches, you'll get the pattern. So that's basically how that will go. And um, answer the question of the week, which is what is your favorite traditional block? Because this whole series that we're doing right now is all about quilting traditional blocks, which this obviously is not. Um, this pattern right now, you can see I'm working these as blocks, which means I will assemble them with Y seams. There will be a tutorial and I will do it with you guys inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group and I will cheer for you every step of the way. So if you've been wanting to learn Y seams, this is a great opportunity. If you're like, ah, no, that's okay. You can also work it in rows. And I will talk about both inside the pattern. So no panic needed. All the, this is this pattern is great for really any level of quilter. Um, if you're a baby beginner and you're nervous about that extra seam, you just work it in rows. If you're wanting to level up, you can work it in blocks. This here, this is um, these are string blocks. So or use um, I use a very basic foundation paper piecing method for this. Very basic. So baby beginners can do this with me. And so you get to learn a couple of different. These are all bias edges. So these are like all different techniques that we're going to get to talk about as part of the pattern and as part of the quilt along. So if you are wanting to learn some of these skills as a beginner, or if you're wanting to practice them as a more experienced quilter, or if you're just wanting, wanting something fun and quick to make, um, this is the perfect pattern for you. I'm so excited about it. Can you tell? I'm like, <laughs> okay, I am going to scroll down y'all's comments real quick. To see what ooh turn dash I like that oh Amy I'm so sorry I will see you later though log cabin oh that's such a good one next block that has caught your eyes you know Marianne I'm still kind of like that I love a good sawtooth star Karen all right on that note I'm gonna move over here so I know I just walked off camera hang tight I'm gonna turn y'all 90 degrees. If you get motion sickness, close your eyes for a second. And then I gotta tilt you guys down a little bit. Let me turn my light. And I'm gonna go see if I can if I'm on camera properly. Let's see. Whew, I'll be sufficiently blinded by that light, that's for sure. Alright, let me tilt y'all down a little bit more so you can see my machine better. I guess I could have been smart and kept my computer over here as a means of checking this. I didn't really think that through, did I? I might have to jump up and down a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Yep, now my head's cut off. Here we go again. I'm so glad y'all put up with me. This is like, this is just honest right here, you know? I'm just so glad y'all put up with this. Okay, we should be good now. Oh, look at that. How wonderful, how wonderful. Today, my dears, Welcome back to Quilt Your Own Adventure. Now that we've taken a little detour down the upcoming quilt pattern, quilt along land. Oh, there's more comments. Yay. Oh, Teresa, you're so sweet. Um, log cat. I love how many of y'all lo love log cabins. This is telling me why you guys liked Lanterns of Hope so much, because that's a log cabin variation. Hmm. <laughs> this is, oh, I love a good half square triangle, Lydia. Star blocks, I love star blocks, which I mean, obviously, since I just named my entire upcoming pattern collection after stars, right? Um, if you're new around here, Aldebaran is the first of four quilt patterns that's coming out in October. I'm beginning to tease and mildly torment you guys. Ooh, which do you guys want some more torment? Here, I'll show you guys fabric. Let's see, which let's do this stack. This is from Paintbrush Studio Fabrics. This line is out now, it's called Otter Romp. Dun, da, da, da. Look at how cute these otters are, guys. So this will be, um, oh, I gotta remember what pattern I'm making with this. I'm making Orion with this. Look how cute these are. Bye. Sorry, I'm like yelling in the microphone. Okay, there's your other little sneak peek of today. More fun fabrics. Now, back to the task at hand. Today, we are continuing to quilt this giant, Moda Big Shot Quilt Along Quilt, which mine finished at something like 84 inches square because I added some borders. So this is a double size quilt. This is a five and a half inch throat space. And I'm just demonstrating that this is possible for you guys. And in the process, 
we are talking about how to quilt all these different traditional blocks. Today, look how handy this is, we're going to quilt the granny square together. Now on the blog I talked about granny squares, a funky pinwheel variation, um, which I had never actually seen that block before. So it's a very interesting block and has some neat stuff you can do with it with the quilting and with the colors, I suspect. I did not choose to use it because I've been looking for an excuse to practice granny squares. Um, but that's on the blog and then sawtooth stars. So I've done quilt pattern or quilting um, plans for all of these blocks over on the blog. There's a link in the caption of the video. And I'm going to use a simple continuous curve design. I had thought about going fancy. And you know what, even as I'm saying that, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to do a simple continuous curve design, but I'm going to put a feather flower right in the middle because I just can't not. So I have been working my way around in this border. You can see I have not finished this side. I'm putting feathers in between the nine patch crosses and the granny squares. And because I did feathers down here inside my star, which was very intricate, and I'm doing the feathers here, which is also pretty intricate, I'm keeping both of these blocks fairly simple in their quilting. Now, this is a very traditional quilt. These are all very traditional blocks done in a medallion style quilt. Um, I obviously modernized the fabric hugely. There's a lot of Alice in glass in here, a lot of cotton and steel. Um, but I'm staying fairly traditional with most of my quilting. Not all of it, but I'm doing a lot of feathers and ribbon candy, things that we think of as traditional quilting motifs um, on this quilt just because it suits so well. And I love a good feather. Now, you could do basically this whole quilt with your walking foot and do funky geometric designs all over it. Um, I dabbled in that a little bit with some of the quilting plans. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I like that, but I want to go more modern, that's how you would do it. You could also go more traditional, um, or you could do an all over motif. It's all up to you, but I'm showing you guys how to go step by step through these blocks. And all of the quilting plans I've created um, have been made with kind of two things in mind. One is this quilt. And so for example, on this quilt, the granny squares, are maybe six inches finished um but i also know that sometimes we make big granny squares and we make a whole quilt out of them so i tried to make quilting plans that would adapt well to being quilted larger or smaller because i want everything we're talking about in this series to translate to all of you who maybe didn't make this quilt or who are going to find this useful for another quilt that you make down the road so this is not a one and done application of these quilting plans right this will be there as a resource for you guys going forward that because like for example next week we're doing flying geese so it might be that you make a quilt with flying geese or with granny squares next year and you can go to my blog and type in granny squares or flying geese and get some inspiration so that's kind of big picture right okay i'm seeing lots of comments so hang on um lydia you've already how far have you gotten on this quilt top and why haven't i seen a picture lydia okay so lydia did not decide to make this quilt top <coughs> until after i started quilting mine because she's crazy. <laughs> Lydia, I love you. I hope you don't mind that I'm constantly calling you crazy on video. I mean crazy in the most affectionate, admirable way ever because I wish I was as prolific as Lydia is what this boils down to. So Lydia, I want to see a picture of your quilt. Um, you have to choose one. No, Sue, you do not have to choose one. The rules are very loosey-goosey around here, Sue. You know that. <laughs> Churn dash, you know, guys, I've never made a churn dash block. Don't fall off your chairs. Please don't fall off your chairs. But I think I need to. I think I need to design some sort of funky churn dash. Ooh, I'm gonna write that down. I'm putting that on my to-do list. Cause guys, just to torture you even more, I'm already thinking about next summer's quilt patterns. I feel like churn dashes might need to make an appearance. Okay. Um, hey Terry, I'm so glad you're here. Yes, you can make so much good stuff with a half square triangle. It's so true, Lydia. Good morning, good morning. Ooh, bear paw is pretty sweet. It's true. Granny square, not Granny Smith. That's okay, Jody. Both are both are fine. Log cabin. Oh, I love it, you guys. Star blocks. Favorite trot. It's really true, though. It's so true. Nested churn dash. Ooh, I will have to look at that. Okay. With all that in mind, I need to think through how I'm going to get started on these granny squares. Now, 
I was about to say I'm gonna break my own rule, but that's not true. I'm gonna break thread. I was thinking about just traveling over to the edge of this granny square and getting going, but I always, always, always tell you guys that if you've turned your machine back on after, like if you've turned it off and back on to check your tension, and one, I need to change thread color, and two, I'm gonna be a good example of checking my tension. So bear with me for a second. We're gonna change thread color. Um, doo -doo -doo. While I'm doing this, if you have been following along thus far, and if you have any questions about any of the blocks we've done thus far, any of the things we've talked about, this is an awesome time to ask questions. Um, sometimes I get that in an email as to, you know, when's the best time to jump in and ask questions? Now, now's a great time to ask questions. Um, anytime that I'm on live video is a great time to ask questions. That's what these videos are here for. So I'm here teaching, you know, I treat, I especially treat Thursdays as a class for you guys. I try to, I try to think about it that way. Um, but anytime I'm on live video, just because this is, you know, a class doesn't mean you can't interrupt and ask about something, you know, similar or related or just generally quilty, right? Um, you've got the airplane geese round done, but not sewn on the quilt. Lydia, I want to see a picture. That sounds amazing. Hey, Lynn! Star blocks, I love it. Oh, Lynn, I wish I was in the UK. It's on my list to be back. It's been too long. Okay. I'm gonna make a bobbin of this aqua. Now, if y'all have read this week's blog post, then you saw my photo where I took four different threads and I laid them out on, um, on this quilt top. And I, un I unraveled, you know, six inches or so of each thread and laid it across my gr granny square blocks to choose a thread color. I used this aqua, whoop. here I'll show you guys the ones I did because I have them all right here. So I used this aqua which is the same as the one I have here, um, 2600 which is my go-to thread, my go-to gray, a darker gray, and then this coppery color. Now the reason that I do this when I'm choosing my threads is because sometimes the thread you think is going to look the best isn't actually the best option. For example, I thought I was going to end up using this dark gray thread to quilt my granny squares. But when I laid it across the block, I realized that even though the value was similar to all the yellows, because this, if you look at my granny squares, I have aquas, this red, yellows, and navies. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty stark contrast between that yellow and that navy. And so I figured if I went with something that was about the value, so about the same darkness as the yellow, and it would be a little light on the navy, but that would be okay because there's not a whole lot of quilting on the navy around these blocks. So I thought this was going to be the one I went with. But what I realized when I unraveled this and laid it across that yellow, and this, is, this isn't going to show up on camera, sorry guys, um, is that quilting corner to corner with continuous curves with this gray color on that yellow would really dull the yellow. It would make it look much flatter instead of letting it shine and pop. What surprised me was how much I liked both of these. So this coppery color and this light aqua don't really appear in this block, but they're similar to these two center colors, right? Um, but this is a warm enough color that I found that even though it too is gonna be a little light on that navy, it's very similar to some of the light colors that appear in the print of the navy. Um, and this is kind of the same thing, that it pulls in these warm tones of the orange and yellow for a really lovely effect. The reason I chose the blue over the copper is that this is a 50 weight and this is a 40 weight. So the 40 weight is thicker. So it was gonna show up more. So I decided to opt for the thinner thread just so it's a little less obvious. All right, let me get this bobbin wound and I'll look at comments while I do it. Having so many issues with that plopping. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's a good tip, Lydia. Lydia mentioned if you're doing variegated threads to unravel enough to see the whole range. I'd love that. 
Oh, Debbie, you should check out the pinwheels that I made quilt powder or uh, quilting plans for this week. Perfect, perfect. Hey, Kate, I thought you were at work. I mean, you could be watching from work. How would I know? I don't know. I always feel like I have to holler super loud over the bobbin. Hang tight. We're getting close. Ta -da. Now, I don't know if you noticed me fiddling with my spool of thread as I was doing that. Um, Orophil threads and many and many other threads I presume as well, but I specifically know with Orophil the way that they are crisscross wrapped like that on the spool is designed to be pulled off the top of the spool without the spool itself spinning. So the fiddling I was doing there was to get my spool to hold still because the thread will come off more smoothly if my spool isn't flying all over the place. And it's designed uh, to do that for the spool to be static, to be still and just allow the thread to move freely. All right. Yay, Lynn! Oh my gosh, I'm so dove gray. Mm, good choice, my favorite. Question for me, Teresa, let's see. How full do you wind your bobbins? Um, I fill it until my machine stops. <laughs> Which is probably not a helpful answer. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, but my machine actually will automatically stop when it's full. Um, it's not quite all the way to the edge. Because I think you want some of that lip to make sure it comes off smoothly. You don't want the thread like sliding up around and getting tangled, right? So close, but not quite all the way. I feel like, I feel like that's not a helpful answer. I'm really sorry. I, I wish I had something more helpful to give you. <laughs> All right, let's check this tension, see if we're still good from yesterday. I was using a navy 50 weight thread and this is an aqua 50 weight. So, you know, in theory, my tension should be pretty good. But remember that that's just theory. Oh, you can turn the little do hooky to have a, I don't fool with that, Teresa. I don't want my bobbin tension messed up. Yeah, that, you know, I just, I would play it safe on that one. Oh, I am going to drop there. Uh -huh. Turning my stitch length down a little bit. That looks fantastic. Okay. We are in business, my dears. So I've checked my tension. You notice I checked top and back. I wanna make sure that I can see the curve of my stitch definition. I don't want any floating threads, nothing super straight and floating, either on the top or the back. I wanna see that little like, of it being pulled into the fabric. Um, but I also don't want the top thread showing through to the back or vice versa. So I'm checking for eyelashes, any icky kind of tugging. Um, okay, so Denise adjusts her, le adjusts her lever. Um, so I guess that's an option. I haven't fooled with that. I, yeah. I'm always scared if I get too crazy experimenting with the mechanical stuff like that, that I will be skilled enough to mess it up, but not skilled enough to fix it if my, um, experiment does not go well. And I figure it's easier to wind a bobbin a little bit more often. Um... Okay. I gotta think, I'm, so the pause that I'm doing there, I'm thinking through how I want to move with this quilt. Typically, I like my quilts to flow uphill. So that would mean that I start up here and I quilt down. And I'm gonna think about that. So if I'm doing continuous curves, I'm going to start in this yellow corner. Can y'all see that? I think y'all can. Okay, so I would start in this corner. Curve, 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 back and forth. 
back the other way, back again. Here I would go halfway. I don't know, hopefully y'all can see that. So if I'm gonna do a flower in the center, I would do my continuous curves, curve, curve, to this intersection, pause, jump in and do my flower, do, 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 back out, finish my curves, and then I'm gonna continue just going back and forth. Oh, and that's where I need to think about it. So here, 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 down, hmm, down, down, up. Nope, okay, so that's what I need to think about is how I'm gonna handle across and back across. I'm letting you guys see this thought process because this is important. Taking this few minutes mentally, and you could do this on a piece of paper too, um, but y'all wouldn't be able to see what I'm pointing out on a piece of paper. Back. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the E, this is just for min, there's a couple of ways I could do this. So if I'm working in a zigzag, then to continue simply working in that zigzag pattern, when I get to the red block, I will stitch in the ditch, right? There, I could sit here and figure out a way to do it so that I like do a fancy thing over here and then resume the zigzag pattern. Um, but I think that's going to be more trouble than it's worth. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing a continuous curve corner to corner in those red blocks, because I will have already put a flower in the middle, is I will simply stitch in the ditch along those and then continue, continue my continuous curve pattern. Now, there's also um, some techniques you could get creative with if you wanted to about starting here and working more than one block at the same time. And if you're new to continuous curves or you're interested in learning more about continuous curves, I cannot emphasize enough the excellence of Dory Hruska's book, Making Connections. There's a link to it in today's blog post. It's an absolutely fantastic book. Um, and Dory's a friend of mine. She's delightful. Um, I highly recommend it. Now, using the techniques from her book, I could go more, effic more efficiently than simply working in zigzags back and forth. But I'm not going to because I will lose track of where I'm at. And I would rather take a little bit more time working in simple zigzags back and forth than have to retrace a bunch of stuff in order to correct my own mistake. And I'm just not going to trust that I won't make that mistake. So that being said, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to work in zigzags and I am going to work flowing uphill because that means it's going to get easier as I go. So I will start with the bulk of this quilt down here in my lap. And as I quilt, I will push it away from me up onto this table. Notice I have, excuse me, a little bit of room here to my left. I know I'm reversed in the camera. To my left to hold the weight of the quilt and I have a table here. Um, this is like a small dining room table that used to be my parents so that I can flow uphill um, and not be carrying the weight of this quilt around. And I don't want it to drop off the back and have gravity pulling it down. Remember, quilts are heavier than you think. And so by the time you've got a heavy quilt hanging off the edge of a table and gravity pulling on it, 9.8 meters per second squared, that's a lot of force, um, that becomes a big drag on your machine and on your needle. And it will warp your needle. You could end up breaking a needle on your presser foot, all kinds of icky stuff, and it can mess with your tension. We don't want to do any of that. So always make sure you've got something your quilt can rest on. Okay. Um, perfect. Lynn, I agree with you. That sounds great about the bobbin. Um, I'm going to leave y'all's bobbin experimenting to your own discretion because that freaks me out a little bit. But if, hey, if it works for you, it works for you and that is awesome. You go for it. All right, here we go. We're going to flow uphill, which actually means I'll be working these zigzags backwards from how I was walking through them with you guys. So I will start on the outside corner. Of this yellow block and there's a reminder at the beginning and at the end of all the blog posts that are part of this series to remind you to doodle your quilting plans before you quilt them and this is why so that you can track your path with your eyeballs and with your hand before you start working on your quilt right 
Press your foot down. Don't mess that up. I mess it up way more often than I want to admit. Now with continuous curves, you're going from corner to corner with an arc. Think about how when you were a kid you would do dot to dots and you know you would go one to two, two to three, and you always just did that with a straight line. But sometimes if you were like me, maybe you got to the end of that picture and you realized that there were portions of it that actually should have been a curved line, but you didn't have that information when you got started, right? And you would erase the straight line and then you'd connect and you'd try to have as smooth of a line as possible going from number 47 to number 48 and from number 48 to 49 to make that soccer ball or that basketball or football or whatever have just the right curve for that object. It's the same kind of thing here. You're going from point to point with a nice even arc in the middle. You don't want that arc to get too steep because then if you have multiple curves all lined up next to each other, it actually, this is not easy to demonstrate with my hands. Anyway, you don't want them bumping, here we go, you don't want them bumping into each other too much, right? So you wanna keep it a nice gentle curve so that it gives that nice effect, but doesn't get in anybody else's way, right? Shoe fly, don't bother me, shoe fly, don't bother me, okay. Sorry, I was inspired to burst into song, y'all. So with that in mind, I'm gonna stitch these curves pretty slowly, especially as I'm getting started. Because I wanna make sure that I'm keeping them nice and smooth. See, and right there, I actually didn't hit that point quite right. I missed it slightly. But you know what? That's okay. I'm not aiming for perfection. And if you can come to terms with that as a quilter, that you're aiming for excellence and for enjoyment and not for perfection, that will set you free. Really, that, that'll set you free in life. If you're looking for excellence and joy in your life and not for perfection, that will make you free to be a happier human, to show more grace to the people around you, to show more grace to yourself. So if you can have that as an outlook on life and in your quilting, you're basically winning. You're doing awesome. So keep that in mind. We're aiming for excellence and we're aiming for joy. We are not aiming for per perfection. And if you're saying, but Holly Ann, I'm a perfectionist. Perfection brings me joy. Then what brings you joy is an increasing levels of excellence, okay? And if you cannot experience joy without perfection, you're gonna give yourself a stomach ulcer. Don't do that to yourself. Don't buy that lie that it has to be perfect in order for you to enjoy it, right? That, that will destroy relationships, it'll destroy quilts, it'll just suck all the happiness out of everything in your life. So aim for joy, aim for excellence. You can aim for increasing levels of excellence, but perfection will suck the life out of you. Okay, and I could go into a lot of theology about that right now, but we're not going to go there. Um, but just trust me, because if you're looking for excellence and joy, that's also going to lead to gratitude. What a delight that I can be here quilting this with you guys right now. What a delight that I can quilt on my home machine. What a delight that I can make things with my hand, that I have the luxury um, of creating something, right? So joy, excellence, gratitude, very powerful. Hey Lori, favorite block is the one curly under your needle. I think that's a great perspective. I love that. All right, I'm working back and forth on these continuous curves. I'm already loving it. I, oh man guys, I'm just so excited. It's gonna look so good. No, I'm double checking. I'm pausing to make sure I didn't just mess that up. I did not, I'm pleased to report. Oh, thanks, Katie. I didn't mean to climb up on my soapbox there for a second, but it just kind of struck me. I've been preaching that to myself this week. Um, coming back from vacation, I felt awesome when we got back. And then I had a couple of kind of rough days of re-entry. You know how that can kind of be after a vacation. And um, I've just been having to, to remind myself of those truths. And um, things don't have to be perfect for me to be a joyful, grateful human. Um, and if things have to be perfect for me to be a joyful, grateful human, then I am condemning myself to um, a sad, grumpy life, right? <laughs> like, and I don't want that. So, 
We're gonna find joy in imperfect circumstances and joy in imperfect quilting. Oh guys, it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I don't know how well y'all can see, but I'm at that red square. And I need to decide if I'm gonna do that flower now. I think I'm gonna wait and do the flower when I'm going through the middle. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue in this rhythm. Check your posture, I just noticed I'm hunching. Sit up a little taller, put those shoulders back. Remember that you're a rock star. Where was I going with this from here? Oh yeah, okay. See, I had to do it again. Sit up straight, put those shoulders back. Now you will find, as you get the rhythm of these curves right, that the one, that some of them you will do is like a single arc. You'll do two curves. So the one that I just did, there's actually three points, doot, doot, doot. But the way that that curve it's they're a triangle like this and that curve is continuous it's half a circle and so as you find your rhythm you will find you can do one curve that passes through that center point to the third point and that's how you know you're getting your arc really smooth right it's really exciting hey Lily Lily I have my beautiful luminous shining on me Lily is over at daylight everybody say hi daylight thanks for making awesome lights that's what's illuminating my face for you guys. Sorry, I just had to get rid of a thread spider if you were wondering what I just picked off my quilt. Oh, that's interesting. I just realized that these are gonna be asymmetrical in how I chose to treat those setting stones, or those setting triangles. That's a mystery we'll solve on the next block. Teresa, agree, agree, agree. I also think that way when choosing fabric, you've got enough fabric for possibly two quilts from my, oh, cool. <laughs> Lydia, I love it. Oh, Teresa, I love that. There's something nice about like finding a new purpose for things, right? Okay, I'm back at my, my red block. So I'm gonna do my feather flower now. A few weeks ago, I linked to my intro to feathers video and it shows you how to make these. But if I've got a diamond and I want to put a feather in the middle of it, I will curve in and then I will do a bump back feather all the way around and then I will finish that first frond on my way back out. So I will end where I started and then I'll have to stitch in the ditch to get to the other side, okay? That's awesome, Teresa. What a great deal. All right, here we go. To the middle. I'm just eyeballing where the center point of this block is. Because again, excellence, not perfection. I don't need to stop and measure it. That takes more time. along the top two edges well they're the top to you they're the bottom to me because I will stitch in the ditch along the other two sides when I pass back in a second okay and then I'll continue my curves now I'm gonna think ahead because what I did over here is on this side I had to bump down in the Navy and so I have a triangle, but on this side, I don't have that triangle. So I need to decide if I'm, how I'm gonna treat that on the way back. So I'm about to bump into that again, I think. Yep, I only bump into it on one side. That's very interesting. So what I'm gonna do when I get over here on the next one is I will retrace 
Will I? No, nope, I'll bump out and I'll stitch in the ditch. Is what I'm going to do in a second. Nope. There we go. So, y'all can see from how I'm doing this that this is a quilt that will be for my guest bed. Um, so, I'm thinking on my feet as I go. I've done this on paper. I've drawn it out. I have an idea of what I want to do. But I'm perfecting it right here on the quilt. Perfecting. Let's put that in problem quotes because it's not perfect. Um, and I'm perfectly comfortable with that. That Honestly, that really does not bother me. That there will be one triangle on this round that is quilted differently than the other navy triangles. That doesn't bother me. If that bothers you, you could have chosen to break thread there, regrouped, and go again. But... Again, I just enjoy thinking on my feet. So this time I'm going to go stitch in the ditch. And then continue on. And that will make this more uniform from one side to the other. I suspect that that irregularity has to do with the fact that I'm quilting these squares on point. I'm not quilting them as squares. I'm quilting them as diamonds. I suspect if I had planned to quilt this at an angle so that I was quilting them as squares, I would not have ended up with that little difference. here yeah okay back and forth two more times and then at this end of this block I'm actually gonna break thread and show this to you guys is this yay 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 um refining that's the that's the board I was looking for Lydia um yes Tina let me get that link for you now before I forget um doo -doo -doo, strings. I'm gonna use my highly technical method of finding my own links called the search feature on my blog which this is a great moment to tell you guys if you don't know this there's a search bar on the string and story blog so you can do it I don't know if y'all can see this super well if you're on the home page which is you know it opens up and there's my face nice and big there's a search bar here that will search the whole website or if you click over to blog I know this is reversed for y'all I'm sorry but if you click over to blog on your desktop the search bar is right here this is the top right if you're on mobile it's at the bottom just underneath the comments for that blog post so I can go over here and type in feathers and it will think for a moment and then it will load search results and it's the first hit intro to quilting feathers and I'll open that up and copy the link over for you guys so if you're ever like oh I know she did a post on this um, fly but yeah Marianne flying by the seat of my pants is probably a little bit more accurate for me except for maybe in this context because if I know I'm doing a video for you guys on Thursdays I think that through ahead of time but just in general, if I'm doing stuff just for the fun of it, I just fly by the seat of my pants. That's how it goes. Um, all right, here's the feathers link for you guys. The free motion quilting foot that came with your machine is the tiny plastic one. You can't see what you're stitching very well. Um, okay, so Teresa, let me, well, I can't show you the one that's on my machine. But I suspect, oh, I don't have it out. So the plastic one... Um, is it like an oval and it has the two little red lines in the front? I'm guessing. That's the one I used to use. Um, it's okay. I didn't have any issues with it while I used it, but this big metal one came with my Eversone and I'm really liking it. Now, this one is closed on the front 
and there's a link on my blog to another one that's closed in the front. Um, the reason I did not choose to link to an open front one is one, I haven't used it and I try to only link to stuff I've used. Um, so I don't want to recommend something to you guys and then you guys go, this is total crap, Pollyann. And then we go, oh, sorry, I didn't actually know. So I don't do that. I only link the stuff I've used. Um, so I haven't used it and I noticed on Amazon the reviews were not as high for the open front one. So I have the closed front one. The only thing I don't like about it is that when I'm pulling threads through, I have to make sure they get fed through the foot, just like with the closed front plastic one. Um, but other than that, I have had no issues with it. It's working great for me. Um, I love that there's lots of space around my needle, so it would be really difficult for my needle to hit the foot. Once in a blue moon, I would manage to hit the foot on the plastic one, and it was a disaster. Um, so I have the closed front one. I really like it. Um, they're super cheap on Amazon, so I would recommend trying it and giving it a go. And if you try, here's the other thing. If you try the open front one, if you're like, I'm just going to be brave and go for it, and you love it, tell me, because then I can recommend it if I've had it recommended to me. But I've had no input on that open front one, so I don't know why it doesn't have good reviews. Um, therefore, not going to send you all off to experiment, on, you know, without knowing it. So, yeah. Okay. Intro to Feathers is up. Let me get this disconnected because I want to show you guys. how I did this and I'll show you the pros and cons of how I decided to handle that little difference. Okay. Let me come around. And I'm actually, if you get motion sick, close your eyes. I'm going to turn y'all slightly so I can see. Oh, you like the open toe foot suit. Oh, that's so good. So I have found with this metal one that even though it's not open, I can actually see pretty well. Um, because it's so, it's so wide. It's like a wide mouth jar at the front of it. Okay, here's what we just quilted. Let me back off on this light so y'all can see a little better. Let's see. Can y'all see those stitches? Mm, we're going to work on it. Let's try maybe if I have light coming from the side for you guys. Can you see? Okay, now y'all can kind of see. See my flower? Um, okay, so we started down here. Because remember, this was, this was down towards me back here. And I went back and forth. Here's the zigzags I was talking about, right? Working back and forth. Here's the one that's different, where I added, I had to travel down, and I curved. Here's the one where I stitched in the ditch, somewhat imperfectly. Now there's a good bit of contrast, as you can see here, between my thread and that navy. So the stitch in the ditch still shows a little bit at the moment. However, I think by the time I quilt this little skinny border here with some navy thread, that will vanish, would be my thought. Over on this side, you can see there was no swooping, right? And I just worked my way down. I'm trying to angle this so you guys can see the texture a little bit. It's not working real well. But then you can see I added the flower in the middle. Ta-da! All right. Let me, oh dear. Hang on, I'm going to turn you guys again. Come back over. Do-do-do. Okay, any questions on that? It is on my list to make a um, basic continuous curve video for you guys underneath my needle. Um, I'll actually probably do that after we finish on here together. That's not a design that I've included in any of my classes thus far. Um, we talk about it a little bit in Rockstar status, um, but specifically for this granny square because it presents some interesting challenges with the way the block is oriented. Um, I'm going to do a video for you guys. So if you're like, that's great, but I couldn't really see, that's okay. We're going to talk about it um, in that upcoming tutorial. I don't know exactly when that'll be out, but it's on my list. In the meanwhile, any pressing questions that immediately present themselves about how I quilted this block using these motifs? Oh, I'm missing. It does, Sue. That may not have showed up super great. So it goes around here and then back through and it just works back and forth until you get to the flower and then I put the flower in and then it continues through there. Does that make sense? I think, oh I don't have the 
drawing with me to show you guys. If you look on the blog, it is, I'm going to tell you which one in the lineup this quilt, quilting plan is most like. Um, this is most similar to the very first quilting plan under intro. Because you could do this with your walking foot or frame. Well, on these particular granny squares, you couldn't do this with a walking foot. It's too small. If you were working on bigger granny squares, you could do it with a walking foot. Does that make sense? Looking the wrong way. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Yay. Hey, Lisa. How are you? Um, Lisa, we're going to get some rain from that hurricane. Did you see that? Lisa's about two hours northeast of me. And we're going to get we're going to get some rain. I think we'll all be fine, but oy. All y'all on the coast, though, guys. Is, by the way, I asked this in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, but I'm going to ask it here, too. But answer in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. If you are evacuating... Um, let us know over in that group just so we can make sure that you're safe and that you're okay. And if you do not have a place to go, if you're evacuated from South Carolina, North Carolina, or Virginia, and you don't know where to go, put that over in the group too, because there's a lot of us. There's like over 2,200 people in the Facebook group by now. And so if you're needing help finding a safe place, um, please crowdsource that over there, okay? Um, hey Cindy! My machine is not backwards, Debbie. My camera's backwards. So I'm using my selfie camera <laughs> on my iPhone and it flips the machine. I know that's terribly confusing when you're watching and I'm so sorry. I, it, that's another one of my things on my list is to have a different camera setup um, when I'm filming with you guys so that it doesn't do that. But then all of our brains are going to have to flip back. <laughs> so we're getting there. Um, Yes, and Winifred lives around the corner from me. She has room. Oh, and this is related to the weekend, but not related to the hurricane. Um, I'm, I'm wrapping up. So if, um, I will get this, this uh, tutorial out as soon as possible for you guys. I'll probably put it up on YouTube and put a link in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. Um, so I'm going to do a few wrap-up things here. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask because I'm going to review a couple of things, and then I'll see you guys inside Quilting Rockstars tomorrow night. So... Um, this weekend, yes, please use Quilting Rockstars to crowdsource if you need a safe place to be. If you need a quilter to find a, find a guest bedroom and a, a power outlet for your, um, and a power outlet for, uh, your sewing machine, you know, crowdsource over there. I know, Lisa, it's going to be so confusing when the, when the, my video is not reversed anymore. It's going to be confusing for me. Um, I don't have a solution on that yet, so it's not an immediate thing. Um... This weekend, if you are local here, I know Winifred's local. There's a few other of you that are local, though Winifred, you have a long arm, so I don't know if this really applies to you. But I'm teaching intro to free motion quilting, um, which includes setting up your machine, how to make a practice sandwich, how to check your tension, how to doodle motifs in order to learn them, as well as a meander, loopy meander, swirls, and switchbacks. We'll be doing all of that at Red Hen Fabrics, which is over in Marietta. I'm thinking about my geography. I think Marietta might actually kind of be that way. Anyway, um, at Red Hen Fabrics, Saturday morning, 10.30 to 2.30. Um, the bulk of the teaching will happen in that first three hours, and then we'll have some just free sew practice time at the end. As far as I know, they're still taking registrations. You just call Red Hen Fabrics. And if you're like, I want to do that, how do I find that phone number? Let me know and I can get it to you. I don't remember how much the class is. I'm so sorry. But I'm teaching that in person for the first time on Saturday. There's already five or six people signed up. I'm so pumped. It's going to be like the best day ever. Uh, so if you're local, know that that's available. Also, I plan on doing more teaching at Red Hen. So I will be getting schedules um, up and posted for you guys. If you're going to be passing through Atlanta and you want to take a class or whatever, if you're looking for an excuse to come to Atlanta, I am going to be offering some in-person classes over there coming up over the next six months to a year, which is so exciting. Um, I'm also working on um, getting offerings up, and I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again because if someone starts bugging me about it, it'll probably happen faster. Um, getting lecture offerings up on my website for those of you that are in leadership at your guilds if you're planning out your calendars for the next couple of years um, I am available for lecturing and teaching which is so exciting um, and all of that I'm working on getting on my website it's just not there yet but if you're like I really want that information send me an email and bug me about it because it'll happen a lot faster if somebody's waiting on it so just FYI 
Um, finally, make sure that you have taken a moment to hit like and share on this post. That would be so helpful um, to make sure that we reach as many quilters as possible with fun community and information. I love teaching this class for you guys on Thursdays. Um, I love coming each week and just hanging out with you guys. Um, and I love for as many of you to join me as possible. So hitting like, um, let's Facebook know that you're enjoying this content and hitting share and sharing it over to your Facebook page or to your favorite quilting groups. Um, is a great way just to invite more people to come join us and come be rock stars with us. Make sure you've answered the question of the week um, about your favorite traditional block to be entered to win a copy of the Aldebaran quilt pattern. I'm pointing over at the design wall because at the beginning of this video I showed you my quilt top in progress. It's not quite done. I still have some pieces to do. There will be pictures when it's done. Fear not. Um, <laughs> I would want to know that. That's why I say that. Um, You'll be entered to win a free copy of that pattern. The pattern release is on the 21st, so you'll get the pre-release information now and the actual pattern next week. The quilt along starts on the 28th, and that quilt along will be happening inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. So if you're like, that looks like a super fun quilt, I wanna make it with friends, I want help learning how to handle the bias edges and the optional, they're optional Y seams, you don't have to do them. I'm doing them, I'm gonna teach you how to do them. It's really going to be no sweat, guys. I figured out that much. Um, and you can do it. You 100% can do it. So if you're like, that looks like fun, um, go ahead and pre-order the pattern. You'll get a copy of the pattern when it launches on the 21st and join the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. Um, anything else? Patricia Rawls, please make sure you email me at stringandstory at gmail.com to claim your copy of Margaret Goes Modern from last week's giveaway. Again, thank you all so much for being patient with me as I took last week off to go on vacation. Thank you for being here with me today. I love hanging out with you guys. I will see you inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, um, which for some of you guys on the Eastern Seaboard, you might not have power, but the video will be waiting for you when you come back. Um, and I think it's our last week Quilting Lanterns of Hope. I need to double check the schedule, but I think it's our last week Quilting Lanterns of Hope, which means, especially for those of you who made the full size Lanterns of Hope, which is a twin size quilt, um, you'll have quilted a giant quilt on your domestic machine. And that makes you awesome. So all of you really are awesome because you're here and you're quilters and I love you. Thank you again for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow night and I'll see you back here next week. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody.